Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you today is super exciting because it's another Venus Optics Laowa Argus 45mm f 0.95 lens. So I'm going to test this on my Sony a7C. There's the front element. It's got a 72mm filter thread on the front. It's got a reversible lens hood that comes on and off. Now I just wanted to point out this is a fully manual lens. There's no electronics, so you do have to manually turn the aperture, manually focus. Don't expect this to autofocus for you. Pretty cool when you look at it from the back, how it's focused on my face, but um, notice the nice metal lens flange. So what we got is we have a manual aperture ring here, but it also has the click and unclick feature or de-click, whatever you want to call it, click on, click off. Anyways, check out the focus scale here and also notice how far the focus throw is. Watch how far I turn this thing. It's a really long focus throw, which makes it incredibly easy to manual focus as you can see here. All right, so just doing a little testing here. I was using the GVM. 850 light here. Sorry for the camera shake. I was just hand holding. Here's the Sony a7C with the 45 and I got a little Lego car set up with some lights in the background. Now I have my custom key here. As you can see, number three set to focus magnifier. So that's the center button on the uh, back of the camera right there. I'm pressing the center button and that's bringing up the focus magnify, which allows you to easily see what's sharp and what's not and then you can turn the focus ring and adjust the focus manually because remember it's a manual focus lens and once you get it where you want it you're good to go now just recording 4k video here i was just going through the focus throw so you can see what this looks like at f 0.95 from the front to the back and you can see the rendering is absolutely incredible there is just a little bit of fringing on the bokeh balls in the background I do see, um, but overall, extremely well controlled. So just going over a couple other specs, this lens weighs in at about 850 grams, and it's got a minimum focus distance of about 50 centimeters, or about 19 and a half inches or so. So this lens is made for the Sony E-mount, the Canon R-mount, and the Nikon Z-mount, all full frame. All right, guys, so let me show you what this lens can do for you in the real world. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. Let's just go through some of these sample photos. Now, because this is a fully manual lens, you're not gonna see the aperture information up here. You will get the shutter speed and the ISO because that's the camera settings, but as far as the aperture goes, you're not gonna know what aperture I was using. I did have to stop down a couple times outside because it was too bright but for the most part, I was shooting at uh, 0.95. So let's go through here, a quick snapshot of my punching bag. This is at the minimum focus distance, so about 50 centimeters. Then I move back just a little bit so you can see more of the background and depth of field plane and whatnot. Now this is just a fully out of focus shot looking uh, down towards my kitchen. And I just wanted to show you how these blobs looked when rendered and how good the fringing control and stuff is when it comes to the uh, bokeh high contrast areas. Now looking uh, just again snapshots, I got this MCT oil and it just looks really good. The 3D pop is incredible, the colors, the clarity. I particularly like the punchy contrast and rich colors this lens produces. All the Argus lenses, as a matter of fact, um, have that same kind of look. And here's just another shot of my mountain bike. You can see the seat right here completely out of focus. And then I focused on the frame right there. And then of course the suspension and stuff is out of focus. So that depth of field play is incredible with this lens. Now I got this cool wooden uh, American flag that I hung on the wall the other day. I really like the way it looks. Just look at that depth of field play. I mean, this looks like really 3D. Uh, it's got some nice pop. You can see some of the lens vignetting here. That is the darkening in the corners. And you do get some of that with a lens like this um, just because the aperture is so fast. Uh, it's almost impossible to negate all the vignetting. So there is just a little bit there. Now, in the early morning the other day, the sun was coming up and it was like glowing orange and pink. It looks so cool. So this is actually from Thanksgiving over at my parents' house. And again, just look at this 3D pop. It's just absolutely incredible. The color and contrast is also quite remarkable. Just some cheese doodles and you can see the deck in the background. Just that buttery, buttery okay rendering same thing with the foreground tablecloth but here's just a snapshot of my dad he was actually eating food so <laughs> sorry about that dad but uh look at this i mean just look at that optical quality sharpness depth of field play i mean it is absolutely incredible this lens here's one of my brother 
And look at that foreground. You see the foreground bouquet? And uh, here's another one of my dad, and I put some stuff in front of him in the foreground so you can see how the foreground separation is, and also the light above his head. Now here's my plate, some turkey dinner here. Just quick, again, these are just snapshots, nothing crazy. And here's just one of the cranberry sauce. Now here's just a cool chocolate horn thing. It has a name, I can't remember what the name of it is at the top of my head. My brother got this incredible banana cream pie cheesecake from this place called Orange County Cheesecakes. Holy cow, is this cake unbelievable. Probably the best cheesecake I've ever had in my life. Now, here's one where it's uh, cut up a little bit so you can get a closer look. Now, I just wanted to show you the difference. This is 0 0.95, and then I stopped it down to F8 for this shot. So you see how much depth of field play? You see how like the image now looks like a snapshot? There's so much busy stuff going on in the background. It doesn't have that cool pop. But when you look at this image, you're like, wow. Like You know what I mean? Like the the cake just stands out because the background is so blurry. That's what's cool about the separation effect. Take a look at this uh, loaf of bread that I made the other day. This is the f my first attempt. It came out pretty good. And you can see here I focused right there and the depth of field fall off is incredible. It's so narrow. And so what I did was I stopped the lens down to like f5.6 so you can see the difference. So wide open you can see how the rack is like out of focus and blurry. And then when I stop it down a little bit, the rack starts to get more sharp. And then if I zoom in on the loaf, you could see the detail is just absolutely phenomenal. Look at this bread I made last night. Came out so good. Unbelievable. So anyways, you take this stuff called poolish and you do this the day before and you make like kind of a pre-dough and then you add all the regular dough and stuff to the water, you add the poolish in there, you mix it all up. I actually used all-purpose flour and a little bit of wheat flour, add some salt and a super wet hand. You go in there and you just massage the dough because I don't have a mixer, so I'm actually mixing it right now. And again, I'm just showing you how this lens can be used for food photography. I have it set up on a tripod and I'm aiming down and I just have it manually set, which is perfect. And it works really well as you can see here. Here's another one. Now this is just after the dough sat. Now this is after proofing the dough, which is the process before it goes in the oven. And then this is what it looks like coming out of the oven. I actually cooked it in a Dutch oven, which is like a cast iron pot. Look at this. Oh my God, look at that crust. Come on now. That crust is unbelievable. Look at that steam. Oh. All right, so moving on to a few more snapshots here. I went for a little walk with the kids and Look at this. I had it stopped down to f5.6, and this is just ridiculously sharp. I mean, it's like razor blade sharp, corner to corner. For this image, I had the lens set to f5.6, f4 right here, and then f2 right here. But just look at how sharp this is. Let me zoom in here so you can see. So at f2, I mean, that's like razor blade sharpness, and the depth of field is so narrow. Now at f4 here, you're going to get more depth of field, so there's gonna be more stuff that's sharp from front to back. And then here at f5.6, even more stuff is sharp front to back. Here's another one. This was shot at like f1.4 or so. And if I zoom in here, you can see just that depth of field is incredible. It just looks dreamy. It almost has like a dreamy look. Same thing with this image. It just looks like dreamy. I mean, look at the background plant. Like these cool balls. It just, it's really, uh, sweet looking. So Layla wanted to, she found this thing where you can make a little ecosystem in a mason jar. So we went out in the woods and she gathered up some sludge, apparently going to turn into like a aquarium or a ecosystem or something like that. So here's the, just a quick image of Layla that I took. Came out pretty good, I thought. And check out this, uh, my neighbor's got one of these cool old school pace cars. Pretty sweet, right? It's like a Monte Carlo SS or something, I think. It's pretty cool. It's old school, but I like it. Now check this out. I found an X marks the spot root cluster, and it's unbelievable. It looks like exactly like an X. If I zoom in again, look at the sharpness this lens produces. All right, so here's three exposures. So this is the normal exposure at a regular exposure value. This exposure here is negative two. So I used bracketing and I took a negative two exposure. This is a plus two exposure, and this is a zero exposure, like a zero EV exposure. So I took these three photos, combined them uh, to create an HDR, and look at this result. 
that's the HDR photo created from those three photos. Here's just another one, different angle. And you see that the shadow 3D detail, unbelievable, looks so good. Now here is just one of the golf course like house where you go, you know, get your pass or whatever. I don't even know what you call it, but where you check in and stuff. And look at the detail and quality. Now here's just a couple more depth of field play shots. I just wanted to show you the foreground out of focus on the grass here. And then here I put the focus on the front so you can see that buttery bouquet rendering. And here I moved it more towards the middle so you can see that depth of field fall off before and after. Uh, and you can get that depth of field sliver there. Now shooting into the sun, you can expect a little bit of lens flare. I stopped it down to about f8 for this. And I did play with the aperture um, and the sun flare was pretty much the same no matter what aperture I was at. It just changed shape a little bit. The contrast is very well controlled in my opinion. Now here's just another HDR. I took three shots for this image. And again, just look at this unbelievable sharpness, detail, color, clarity. I mean, so this is what it looks like at f0.95. Now, if I stop down, you can see, um, oh, by the way, there is just a little bit of a green halo on the uh, bouquet balls there. Not much, just a little bit, but worth noting. So if I just go to the right, I'm going to stop down. So I, I went to, this is f1.2, this is f1.4, this is f2, this is f2.8, this is f4. This is f5.6, this is f8, this is f11, and this is f16. So f16 versus f0.95 is quite dramatic. Now looking at it from the side, here's another one at f0.95, and I just edited this one a little bit to give it some extra pop. All right, guys, so the Venus Optics Laowa Argus 45mm f0.95 lens is phenomenal. I loved using this lens. I also loved using the 35mm lens I recently reviewed. The 45mm, however, gives you a little bit further view. It's a little bit better for portraits, in my opinion. It's not quite as wide, so you can get a little bit of extra separation, which I particularly like. Now, what I really like about the fully manual lenses is you're getting better quality optics for the money because they don't have to put in all the autofocus motors and things like that. Um, so you're getting better quality uh, optically uh, for sure and you can clearly see that in the incredible video footage I got with this lens and also the sample photos especially the HDR sample photos the detail and the richness of color produced by this lens is absolutely remarkable it does have some significant vignetting at the wide open f0.95 aperture but it as you stop down it gets less and less and honestly that doesn't really bother me it is there but i actually usually add vignette to my photos anyway so not that big of a deal but on large aperture lenses like this you're going to get some vignetting wide open there's just nothing you can do about it so just so you're aware this lens does have that you can fix it in post not the biggest deal in the world. All right, guys, so if you found this review useful, if you could do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing, that would be awesome. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask below in the comments area. Also below the video in the description area will be the links for the equipment I use to record this review. And also if you wanna check out the uh, Venus Optics website and some of their other Laowa lenses, they're really awesome optics for sure. And also be sure to check out my other Argus reviews. I got the 33 millimeter and the 35 millimeter I already reviewed if you'd like to check those out. Those will be linked up here and I will catch up with you guys next time. Take care. Have a great day.